Hello Falcons fans, Anthony Fusco here, live from Elk Stadium, and I'm going to talk to you about the Kelowna Falcons' recent series against the Yakima Valley Pippins. The series before, the Falcons were down in Cowlitz, with the Black Bears taking two of three. But in game number three, the bats came alive and the Falcons were able to grind out the win and avoid the sweep. The Falcons' victory in game three earned them their second series sweep of the season and gave them sole possession of first in the WCL's North Division. The team also extended its season-high winning streak to four games and were able to grind out victories both offensively and defensively. After the Sacramento State team fell in the regionals of the NCAA tournament, Ian Dawkins stepped into the West Coast League and didn't miss a step. He opened up the scoring in Game 1 with an RBI single between third and short. He covered the outfield well from left and center field, including this over-the-shoulder catch to end Game number 2. Dawkins' ability to generate solid contact and spray the ball fits well into Brian Donahue's offensive philosophy. The fans will remember Mr. Dawkins most for the way he introduced himself to the team. His walk-off shot energized his team and tilted the table in their favor for games two and three. The Falcons' second home series of the year was against the Gresham Grey Wolves, and the series was marred by poor defensive play by the Falcons, which cost them both games of their doubleheader. The boys rebounded nicely in the field. They made some great decisions and were able to execute key plays in critical moments. Good defense starts with good communication. Catcher Raul Ortiz spots Tora Otsuka's lead at second and signals over to Braden Toika, who catches Otsuka in no man's land. Toika makes the right move, corralling him back towards second for the out. The Falcons had a sloppy start in the first inning of game three, with three consecutive errors loading the bases with two outs. But the team buckled down in pressure moments to keep runs off the board with solid defensive coverage. The Falcons are full of great athletes that track the ball well, but the team occasionally forces the ball into risky situations. Coach Donahue does not like to gift extra bases to the opposition and would rather his team eat the ball when the play starts to unravel. Matt Bosher forced an off-balance throw in Game 3. That plated two runners and cut the Falcons' lead in half. After being moved to second later on in the game, he fields yet another deflection and forces a throw home, but Matt Scheffler bails him out by throwing out the trailing runner at second. The pitchers fielded their position well during the series, including this smart decision to take the lead runner with no outs. Volsky with the smart call to eat the ball, which leads to an easy ground ball with two outs to end the inning. Volsky continues to make the tough plays at third, including this around the horn double play to end the eighth in game number three. The quality of a defense is often determined by the quality of batted balls hit their way. Cade Meckles, the right-handed pitcher, made his defense's job extremely easy in game number two. He was picking the corners, changing speeds, and drew consistently weak contact throughout the contest. Meckles arrived in Kelowna just in time to meet his teammates before game one, and was ready to make his first start the next day in game two. His two-seam fastball gave lefties fits all game. Notice how the late movement on the pitch forces Lucas Denny to lean for the ball, which neutralizes his power and creates soft contact. In pitcher's counts, Meckles likes to tempt batters outside the zone with varying speeds. In full counts, he isn't afraid to target the edges and used his two-seamer to great effect both inside and outside the zone. If a batter started to time his fastballs, Meckles brought out his curveball, which has nice 12-6 action and ankle-breaking potential. He throws his fastball and breaking balls in the same arm slot, which adds to his deception. In the fifth, Meckles uses a high hook that drops into the zone for strike number three. He's an athletic player with experience playing shortstop, which makes him particularly dangerous fielding batted balls from the mound. With the help of Josh Glenn behind the plate, Meckles mixed up his approach in second and third at-bats. After getting Denny but the outside two-seamer in his first at-bat, he uses the two-seamer to jam Denny on the first pitch of the at-bat. The ball hits the junction of the bat for an easy pop-up in foul territory. Logan Steinberg, the Falcons' first baseman, has been flashing his glove and his bat since his arrival in Kelowna. The 6'4", 205-pounder has displayed some excellent range at first, and his clutch hitting has him second on the team in RBI. Steinberg has shown great versatility at first base, scooping balls out of the dirt with smooth hands and footwork. He tracks the ball well on his backhand, which is important for right-handed first baseman. When the ball is bouncing, Steinberg charges the ball well and can get down quickly for scoops with his long frame. He seems to hit best with runners on base and had a crucial RBI single in the eighth inning of game one that put his team in position to win. Falcons manager Brian Donahue has built his team on small ball and manufacturing runs. 
Every player is expected to sacrifice their at-bats in order to move a player from first to second or second to third to get runners in scoring position when the opportunity arises. With the game on the line in the eighth inning, Matt Volsky lays down a perfect sacrifice bunt to move the runners to second and third. Taylor Wright then patiently draws a walk to load the bases. Logan Steinberg then punches a ball to right to bring the Falcons within one. Then with Michael Wyatt struggling on the mound, Alex McGarry waits out a walk and the game is tied. In game two with the game still in the balance, Bryce Steckler draws a full count walk with two outs to keep the inning alive. Josh Glenn then steps up and jumps on the first pitch. He finds a gap between third and short. Matt Botcher then gets on the pitcher quickly as well. Coach Donahue runs up the line to wave Steckler home and the gamble pays off as the ball is cut off at third and the Falcons double their lead. In game number three, DJ Daniel started off the sixth with a first pitch hit to the left center gap. Davis Tadasichuk lays down a sacrifice bunt but speeds down the line to beat the throw at first. Matt Scheffler gets the signal to bunt and lays a beauty down the third base line and lunges at the bag just in time to beat the throw, loading the bases. When the bases are loaded with no outs, any contact can be an RBI. And Ian Dawkins puts just enough bounce on the ball for DJ Daniels to slide into home safely. The Falcons will continue to use aggressive base running tactics to harass their opponents once they get on base. But the more they tempt their opponent to throw, the riskier this endeavor becomes. The Falcons are at their best when they push for extra bases. When the ball is hit to right, Ian Dawkins never slows down and rounds second at full speed to reach third with plenty of time. However, Volsky gets caught rounding first wide and is thrown out. Concentration and good communication with base coaches is key for successful base running. And if you take your eye off the play for a second, you could get caught in no man's land. It can be tempting to run on first movement from the pitcher. However, it is important to make sure that the pitcher is moving towards home first. Otherwise, it's a long run to second base knowing the ball is waiting for you. You never know when getting thrown out on the base pass will come back to bite the team because the next batter always has the potential to clear the bases. When a pitcher bounces a ball to the catcher, it is important to make sure that the ball is bounced away from the catcher before running. The pitch stays at the catcher's feet and Matt Scheffler doesn't stand a chance. Coach Donahue loves it when his players hustle hard to make plays for their team. However, sometimes his players try to do too much in a single play. Donahue believes in his players' abilities, however, and will often wave them around for extra bases himself, but the individual skill of the defense is hard to predict, and sometimes a perfect throw can ruin a good idea. At the end of the day, the Falcons will live or die on the base paths, and if they continue to hustle hard and keep their eyes moving, there will be plenty of scoring opportunities for them this season. The hustler of the series goes to Connor Gurnick, who put his body on the line to help his team win the series. Gurnick opened up his series with a blooper that dropped beside the first base line and stretched it into a double with pure hustle and a head first slide. He took a four seamer back up the middle with two outs to drive a run home in game number three. His bat was hot in the series. In the third, he lines a frozen rope over the third baseman's head and rounds first hard, but has the foresight to stop and take the single. At second base, Gurnick kept his body in front of the ball and delivered consistent throws to first. When there were runners on base, Gurnick battled hard at the plate to generate solid contact and drive in runs. After a bittersweet series against the Gresham Grey Wolves, the top performance of the series goes to Canadian-born shortstop Taylor Wright, whose hot bat helped the Falcons continue their winning streak. Wright opened up the series swinging and never let up first dropping his hips and punches the ball to opposite field. He's developing a reputation around the league for timely hitting and is starting to see less pitches in the zone, which is fine with Wright, who will always take a walk when it is offered to him. Wright displayed confidence at short in the series, making routine and difficult plays in the field. He takes his job seriously at the plate, and if you throw him an inside fastball, he will gladly get the barrel around to launch it into right field. He's an aware base runner and will take second if he senses the opportunity. Wright has a meticulous routine at the plate and locks into every pitch. He identifies the ball quickly out of the pitcher's hand and he will launch an outside pitch up the middle or to opposite field. Wright has led his team in RBIs all season long and he played at four in game three, earning his team the win. Taylor Wright was a late addition to the team roster and has turned out to be amongst the most valuable members of the team. Not much was expected of the freshman Canadian when he stepped on the field opening day, but his performance throughout the first half of the season has made him one of the players to watch out for in the West Coast League. It's easy to get pumped up after a four-game winning streak, but the Falcons will need to conserve their energy 
They're now going on a six-day, six-game road swing through Washington and Oregon before returning home at the end of the month for a three-game set against the Cowlitz Black Bears as the halfway point of the season approaches. Until then, keep on following your Kelowna Falcons as they make a push for the playoffs. My name is Anthony Fusco. Thank you for watching, and now enjoy the top five plays of the series.